Hello, I'm Paul, and this is uh, Shackleton uh, Beckwith. So, we're going to, um, I'm going to continue discussing, or we're going to continue discussing, um, Cyclone Fanny. Um, so, I'm going to, this video is mostly going to be showing you the information on Earth Null School, the sea surface temperature, the mean sea level pressure, um, mean surface uh, surface level pressure, um, the the winds at the surface, and basically the track of of this um, cyclone because it's actually quite fascinating. Um, it uh, as you'll see, um, it looks to me like the low pressure area actually started in the southern hemisphere about one and a half degrees south, two degrees south, something like that. And then it moved up into the um, into the Bay of Bengal and uh, approached India. So this this is very interesting because it's very unusual um, that storms would hit India in April. It's only happened uh, once before, and because uh, normally they curve off to the right and and uh, you know miss India, in in uh, and yeah, it's it's very very rare for April. And I think it's also very, very rare that such a disturbance would act could actually be traced to be starting in the southern hemisphere, crossing the equator, and then coming up. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, let's have a look at the stuff. Let's have a look at the um, what actually happened with this uh, cyclone. Okay, so. This is, uh, if you Google Earth Null School, click on Earth. Um, we're just, this is the default mode. We're looking at the air, the surface, and the wind. And you control the time that you're looking at by this menu here. So we're, this is May 1st, 2019, um, when the storm is, is quite intense and just off the coast. It's approaching the coast here. So... What I'm showing here is I'm looking at the ocean, the current, and the sea. I'll go to the sea surface temperature first. Okay, so for for uh, hurricanes or category for 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 hurricanes to intensify, and they're called cyclones down in this region, typhoons in other regions. It's all the same sort of thing. Very, you know, very strong, very deep, low pressure area, very strong winds uh, around. Um, so in order for amplification of these storms, they extract their energy from the ocean and the ocean temperature has to be greater than or equal to about 26, 26 and a half degrees Celsius. <coughs> so <coughs> if we look here, the temperature of the water is 30.6 degrees. 30.9, okay, over here it's about the same, over here it's actually 31 degree, you know, this is like a sauna, and even in this region here, you know, it's well over 29 in this entire region, pretty much. And if we go back down here, to this is the equator, go back down here, the water's like 30 degrees, so so it's very, very hot, it's very, it, it varies from about 29 to about 30 one degrees um, in the whole basin, which is well over 26.5 degrees that's required. If you look at the anomalies, um, this is the, so this is the difference now from the long-term average. It's about minus one, almost approaching minus one degree. And then if you go up in these regions, it's plus one degree or so. So it, it varies from plus, and plus or minus one degree um, from the, the normal. So the ocean is very warm, but that's normally the case in this region. Now, so this is the uh, surface winds. Um, and, okay, so what I've done is, okay, so I've got the surface winds. I've expanded the map. So we're looking at air at 1,000 millibar. Um, or the surface, you know, you can you you can choose. This is like a few feet above the surface. Um, we're looking at the winds, and now is when you know this is where the storm is now. Now let's go back a full day, 
and you can see the progression of the storm in reverse. So let's see where we can see um, it first forms. So I'm going back. This is the 25th, 24th. You can see it there. Um, still north of the equator, 2.34 degrees. Go back here. Now, this is a depression here where the storm actually starts to form. If I go back another day, this is April 23rd. If I go back another day, there's not much to see here. Now, it actually can be a bit clearer if you look at the mean sea level pressure and the winds at the surface and the mean sea level pressure. So air, surface, you choose mean sea level pressure here. And this is where we are now. And let's go back. And you can see the progression of the storm in reverse. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so you can still see the low pressure area here on the 24th. And this is on the 23rd. You can see you know, a low pressure area right in here, you know, slightly blue area. And if I go back a further day, okay, you can see some expanse here of lower pressure, but there's nothing, there's no cell, if you like, low pressure cell, low pressure confined cell. Okay, so we can go, we can expand. This is a 23rd. This is the, uh, whoops, I, I want to go back. Um, I want to go a full, here we go. Okay, so this is the 24th. So right here, you know, so one and a half degrees. This is 1.7, two degrees. Anyway, this is the equator here. So this is the origin of, of this, um, of Cyclone Fanny. Okay, it's just a it's just a disturbance, just a rotation here. What's interesting is there's some very powerful rotations here and here, but of course, you know, it's good that these ones weren't further up and captured because they're they're much more well defined here already. But they're well in the southern hemisphere, you know, ten degrees or so. Okay, these ones would continue to go south probably if they were going to generate uh, cyclones. But keep your eye on this one here. Let's expand in a bit. Okay, so this is the rotation here on the 24th. And if we go by, by uh, three hour increments, you can see it's crossed the equator. Okay, fall, it's, it's getting well more well defined here. Okay, you can still see it in each of these. It's, it becomes very elongated. It's quite interesting here. And it moves up and intensifies. You know, and here we are uh, up here. And then as it comes ashore, okay? So it's good to track it with, to find the origin of where all of this started. It's, it's, it's very useful to use the mean sea level pressure. Look at the winds at the surface plus the mean sea level pressure. Okay, now let's go back and have a look at it in this view here. Okay, so this is the, let's zoom in a bit here. Okay, so this is the 22nd. No sign of it. Here we go. This is it on the 23rd. Okay, you know, at one degree south latitude so it's in the southern hemisphere then if we do three hour increments it starts moving north we can expand it okay let's go back to where we were okay so you can see it very clearly here okay and moving forward in three hour increments it moves up and uh, it, there's quite a big jump in that la three hour period from here to here as it crosses the equator, it becomes very elongated here, okay, which is a very, very interesting thing. It stays elongated here. And as we move up, it's, it's starting to tighten up here. Okay, this is interesting, a circular flow here and quite a bit of elongation here. So I'm moving up in three-hour increments. And then it tightens up 
and it's starting so it's it's it jogs around a bit okay and then it tightens up and spreads out and tightens up is there, there it's elongated again it's very interesting um formation i'll have to look into more detail about why that that happens and then like even here it spreads out quite a bit i mean look at this uh configuration here uh, like i said i'll have to so this dominates here the other one kind of breaks off and then it moves back and it tightens okay so now it's well defined and easily recognizable as it moves north so we'll just continue to track it up to see how it's moving in three hour increments starting to to uh, tighten up and there it elongates again yeah th this is um very interesting it's i mean i don't know if it's just eye wall replacement starting okay now it's intensifying as it goes through that water that's about 29 between 29 and 30 degrees and now it approaches and comes up to the comes up to the, towards the coastline and it's strengthening even more and then it turns did a very sharp right turn and came due you know very far north so it had a track it didn't have a nice gentle curve it came in a straight line almost and then a straight line up there there it's very very strong i mean it was a category five for a while and it's still it's coming up here and uh you know then it weakened back to a couple of miles an hour two miles an hour less than category five so it came ashore as a as a category four okay so Um, yeah. Okay, so, so basically, this, um, it's, it's quite interesting. The water is so warm in the Bay of Bengal, you know, it's, uh, you know, only this, this, uh, storm formed, um, the end of April, and it's run into May, it's come ashore in India, it's only the second one coming ashore like that in April the other the other storms curve off to the right and and miss India um, it's very interesting that this storm actually can be tracked you can track the initial low level low pressure low mean sea level pressure disturbance uh, a few degrees south of the equator so I've talked in you know other videos years ago about the jet stream crossing the equator and uh talked also about the coriolis force meaning that there's no cyclone formation generally between minus between 10 degrees south and 10 degrees north bracketing the equator but uh, clearly there there are exceptional cases to that and this is a particular example where the disturbance forms south of the equator so it's uh actually quite um quite fascinating and also you know what is really interesting is the if we go back again here so once the storm is very powerful it has a very well defined eye it's very circular it looks like a typical cyclone or storm but there's periods there's periods here where it's got a very it's it's got these offshoots here and it's very elongated and there it's uh formed again and formed and this see look at this you know when it's weaker it uh it can cover a large area and then as it gets stronger and stronger it tightens up but there's also this very strong you know very uh strong linear sort of effect non-circular um, effect and i need to look at that in more detail and also look at other examples where the disturbance actually forms south in the southern hemisphere south of the equator and then and then crosses the equator anyway thank you for listening and uh, be sure to check out my 